Time to cross the T's, dot the I's with the rest of the week's top stories. And with us now, Fox Business's own Shabani Joshi, Project 21 fellow and daily uh, caller columnist, Deneen Borelli, a business professor at George Washington University, former president of the National Association of Broadcasters, David Rear. Uh, first, let's start with the uh, high-speed rail. This story's been getting a little more publicity lately. It ran into a buzzsaw with all the budget cuts. The question is, can we afford to spend $10 billion on, well, what's been approved so far, that Florida's turned down the money? Do we really need a high-speed rail from Orlando to Tampa? In California, they want to build it from Fresno to Chowchilla. Uh, 24 states have applied for the money that was supposed to go to Florida, so... Uh, Shabani, let's start with you. <laughs> Chowchilla, you know, there are people that are clamoring to get to you know, Chowchilla. You know why they put it there? Because that's a high unemployment area. It has nothing to do with transportation. Simply, yeah. it, it's... it's a and, and, and there you go. It just It's a throwaway, and it just shows that the government did not do the best with its planning and its allocation of money. You know, unfortunately, I just think that be, something has to give. We don't have all this money to dole out to, to all these projects. I'm a big believer in high-speed rail. Anyone who's been to Europe and parts of Asia, we know it's a, it's a good system, and the United States is behind the rest of the world in this. But at this time and moment in time, we just have to prioritize things. And guess what? We've got a record deficit that we need to attend to, and this right. is one of the projects that's going to have to go by the wayside. Yeah, but Deneen, I mean, you know, the people say, well, uh, you know, President Eisenhower built the interstate highway system and, and see how important that was to do it. I mean, you got to do it sometime, or you agree with Shabana? Listen, I am so glad this program has been derailed, okay, pun intended. Yes. Right? <laughs> we don't have the money, and thank goodness Governor uh, Rick Scott had the courage, the political courage, to turn down this money on, you know, on principle. You know, it just, it, we're st we need to stand for fiscal responsibility and discipline, and that is something that he has done. Well, David, I'd like a new Ferrari, but I'm not <laughs> sure if my pocketbook wants a new Ferrari right now. What do you think? Are you going to be the lone man out and go for high-speed rail? No, Amtrak already receives about $1.6 billion in subsidies for the Northeast Mid-Atlantic Corridor. Uh, they do a good job, not a great job. Most of the European uh, consortiums of high-speed rail are private companies. If, if there's a really a, a need, private industry will supply the need. I think, uh, like the other two uh, guests said, uh, we just don't have the cash, so we should just cut. And if it's a good idea, it'll come back around when the economy's growing, and we'll build them then. I, yeah, and, and I agree. Private businesses will come in and take over. They, they will. Um, you look at some of the times it takes to get from point A to point B, and if you had a high-speed rail, and a lot of people go, what's the advantage? You know, but anyway, it's a push. Uh, speaking of transportation, air traffic controllers still falling asleep out there. The question is, is it really a safety issue? I'm a pilot. I'm convinced this has nothing to do with safety. In fact, what this looks like is you're putting somebody in a dark room in the middle of the night with next to nothing to do. <laughs> Wouldn't you fall asleep? So the government's answer to this is let's hire more people. Here, I'll fall asleep. I'll watch you fall asleep, and then I'll wake you up, and then you watch me. I mean, it, this is crazy. It's ridiculous. Uh, you know, re personal responsibility. Don't add more people to the problem. That's not going to solve the situation. And firing the, the head of the FAA, that was just a show trial, as far as I'm concerned. Where are these people's responsibility? But what kills me is that Michelle Obama was going to have, what, a personal FAA somebody to, to oversee her flights? You know, what about the American people? I know. That, 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 <laughs> yeah. that, 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 well, David, let's get your take on it. What do you make well, of, what should they do <laughs> about the air traffic controllers falling asleep? Yeah, well, first off, if they fall asleep, they should be fired. But more importantly, the FAA is six years behind in a $2.1 billion renovation of technology. They're $500 million over budget. They need more transparency and accountability. And you know what? Even if somebody leaves, they should leave. In business, if you're not successful, if you don't do your job, you're out the door. The same should apply to the FAA. I agree. But, you know, one of the things, uh, Shabani, 90% of the airports in this country don't even have a control tower. Yeah. And, and at night, a lot of them shut down anyway. Why are they hiring more? Why don't they just have, other than maybe New York, the Chicago, certain airports, Dallas, right. where there's a lot of traffic. Other than that, 
So most of these airports where there's been a problem, there's been like four planes between midnight and 8 a.m. And why can't technology replace this? I mean, why do you need a human being right there to kind of uh, alert you to the obvious? Don't you have machines and technology to be able to do that? I mean, we're, we're kind of skirting around the issues that there needs to be a major uh, rework, which our guest just uh, spoke about. Infrastructure, technology needs to really be put into this. You're a pilot. You kind of know how uh, antiquated the system still is. Um, and this is just another example. When people are falling asleep on the job and our answer is hire more of them and maybe get them a few Red Bulls, that's not really the right. We're, we're not handling the, the situation the right way. It doesn't seem like it's, uh, the management side of this is doing their that's job. That's right. Yeah, uh, and that's well, the problem. They blame they blame everybody else usually, but sometimes right. when you see a problem in a company or a business or a government agency, it's the managers. It's the, the, not the not the, the individual. Yeah. But fall asleep, are we going to hire two more of you? I know. <laughs> I know. I can't imagine it either. All right, presidential race will soon be back in full swing. Who is President Obama going to run against? Lots of names, uh, lots of people, Mitt Romney, Mike Huckabee, Sarah Palin, all kinds of different names out there people are throwing around. But the Trumpster is on top. And David, uh, you're in Washington. What is going on? Why is well, Donald I, Trump so popular? Well, I think he's popular because he's a celebrity, a successful businessman, prone to controversial statements, has helped Democrats in the past. If we close our eyes and thought this was 1979, we would say it's Ronald Reagan. Now, Donald Trump's no Ronald Reagan, but I think you have to give the man credit because America, particularly Republicans, yearn not to have another politician be their president. And I think that gives him a great advantage in the race when he's running against all these other former governors, elected officials, people who are part of the political class. Uh, you know, I is think it, the voters, it, it, I, I think there's a difference between popularity, it's certainly this uh, early in the game, and then what voters are going to end up aligning, who they're going to end up aligning with. I think uh, Donald Trump is popular because he's famous. And right now, he's really the only most, he's the only well-known candidate that even the Republicans are shopping. There's a long laundry list. I think the Republican Party out there is very confused. There are a lot of names that are being thrown out there. And right now, Donald Trump is the only one who everybody knows across the board so he's getting talked about. The voters still need to get educated and knowledgeable about who's going to actually run. I don't think Donald Trump will end up being a serious contender a year from now, but right now it certainly gets a lot of people interested and certainly involved in the game again. Is, 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 the, is, the, is the birther thing the reason that people are saying he has guts to even bring it up? Everybody else thinks somebody brings it up, they're crazy. I think it's the fact that he's a businessman, he speaks his mind, he says what he means, and the other aspect is I think the Republican and the Democrat are probably a party have serious problems if he is the individual who was you know in the lead so far of all uh, possible candidates and we don't know if he is going to run or not yet but this just shows that there is a, the rise of the Tea Party movement it is not politics as usual people want representative leadership and someone who is going to do what they say and mean what they say that is not what we are experiencing with our current president I think you're right I think a lot that, of people feel, right. feel snookered you know, by, that's by right. both well, sides. That's exactly right. The most important uh, obstacle do Donald Trump has is he has to convince people this isn't shtick, that he's not doing this to drive up ratings for his show, it's not about him, yeah. that it's about America. If he does that, I think he'll be a very legitimate candidate. All right. David, Deneen, Shabani, thank, thank you, you all very, very Thanks. much.